She is a chart-topping musician who also um, was one of Time Magazine's most influential people of 2020. She's the author of the New York Times best-selling book, I Would Leave Me If I Could, which is an amazing title. Um, and her new line of makeup is called About Face, also an amazing. She's good with titles and writing people. It's available right now. Let's everybody say hello to Halsey! I am such a big fan of yours. I, I think that you are so incredibly talented. I know I'm supposed to be like host person, but right now I'm just like artist person. You're so incredible. Thank you so much for doing our show. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. And I'm so excited to be talking to you. You know, I went and saw your show at Staples Center. I think it was one of the last concerts that I went to and it was so Oh my gosh, thank you. I know, I keep making that joke. We we didn't know that we had our last like farewell tour. <laughs> we didn't know we were all on our own farewell tour because it's, yeah, where no one's performing. Well, you're an incredible artist. Um, have you been, not just singer, I mean as in painter as well. Um, you're kind of an all around artist. So have you been painting while stuck at home? Yeah, I have been. I like, I'm super guilty of starting things and not finishing them ever. So I have like a bunch of half made paintings in the house. Um, but I do have one that I just finished. I did it for a friend as a gift. It's a picture of their daughter and they haven't seen it yet. So I figured why not let them see it for the first time on the Kelly Clarkson show. Oh my gosh, I wanna see it. This is amazing. What a beautiful, thoughtful gift. Ugh. Okay, so here it is. Are uh, you serious? I can't hold it straight. I don't know, but can you see it? Um, you, I, I'm not, I, I'm usually not speechless, ever. Um, that's really great, Halsey. Thank you, thank you so much. I yeah, know, it's I, like a hobby. That's a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> you could be a professional fate, that's amazing. It's your hobby. Um, <laughs> and just from, I mean, a mama's point of view, there's nothing cooler. I actually just received a really cool gift from uh, my friend Y standing here that was of my kids. There's nothing cooler than doing something like that for a mama. Like it's, we love our, our little ones so much and wow, you're incredible. Um, and another thing, wait, I have to say this though, <laughs> side note is you, um, <laughs> another thing that's been going on while you're at home is snacks, right? You're really into like pretty random snacks. I can't stop eating. I don't know what's gotten into me. You know, I think it's like kind of being home in the quarantine, like, I, I usually eat really healthy when I'm on tour, and you know how this is. I was on tour for six years, and yeah. all I was eating was like grilled chicken breast and rice and yeah. spinach, um, and sometimes like green room gummy bears. But I, <laughs> um, since I've been home, I've had time to like experiment with different snacks, and I take it pretty seriously, yeah. I love it. Well, maybe you can explain some of these snacks you've tweeted about. Um, this one is dry Oreos are so weird to me, need dunkage, which I totally get. Like I have to, okay. I like a cookie soaked, I'm with you. I'm like, let's just soak it a little bit, yeah. I can't eat them dry. I don't know, I don't understand people who eat Oreos dry. They also have to be double stuffed. That's a rule for me. And sometimes I like to smear peanut butter on them, which is an old trick I learned from watching The Parent Trap when I was, <laughs> a little, a young child. Yes, oh my gosh, I love that movie. Um, also, I would really love your metabolism. Um, <laughs> like, wait, what? She's like double stuffed. I'm like, oh, okay. What's your, what's your latest snack obsession? I started making Rice Krispie treats, but like without the Rice Krispies. And I know that doesn't make any sense, but I make them with other cereals. So like fruity yeah. pebble treats or like cinnamon toast crunch treats. And they're so easy to make and they're so good. So oh, good. fun to do with like, your kids. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh. I, you know, if I was, didn't like live alone and, you know, with my dog and, you know, have no or like family or like love in my home, I would have with my kids too. <laughs> I love you so much. If any of my real friends are listening to that, it was a joke, I swear. I <laughs> They're like, we need to call her right now. Um, I hate that when I make jokes, people are like, you're fine right now. I'm like, I'm just being funny. All right, so you grew up in New Jersey. Um, is it true you guys had a bunch of urban legends? Yeah, Jersey's a weird place. I think it's because everyone's so bored and we're not as cool as New York. So like, you just kind of have to come up with things to make you special. So one of the things that we came up with is like the Jersey Devil, who's like this, um, I guess, like creature that lives in the forest. There's like 
what? all these really weird like phenomenon that are really just a product of I think crazy people but it was like the profanity houses and Jenny Jump and just like a lot of urban legends that are mostly meant to scare kids into like not being out past curfew but they definitely scared me when I was growing up I fully bought into them there's a whole book about it called Weird NJ that talks all about how weird New Jersey is with stuff like that it's really weird um I'm 38 and I'm not yeah I won't go near that stuff so yeah I don't even do haunted houses I'm like but mostly because I don't want to be sued because I full on will punch people like they'll come out at me and I'll just be like what and I'm just like I get really I don't I like them. yeah it's not my fault I I fully believe that you would do that. I, I'm telling you, I don't like to be scared. Like, my ex always thought it was so funny. He'd just, like, jump out, and, like, and I'd scream, and then I'd, like, lose my voice. I'm like, no one's, no, like, no one's laughing. <laughs> like, no one thinks that's funny. People do. I'm, I'm the jumper. Oh, my gosh. You like to I'm scare scared. people? I hate Yeah, that. I'm the scare relationship I am I hate that I totally I'm like I'm gonna pull cuddle time if it happens again <laughs> like I was like <laughs> but anyway um I need to ask you about this photo that you posted here we go what's happening here what you okay you should know better than anyone that being on stage you get like random afflictions you don't know where they come from well not that like, big <laughs> what? okay I Whenever I'm on stage, I just get this uncontrollable urge to like throw myself to the ground. I don't know why. I just like, I'm always like falling to my knees dramatically or like crawling around on my elbows and knees and like jumping off of things. And I always end up covered in like really serious bruises. The funny thing about that picture actually is that one of the bruises has like a fish scale shape and it's because I was bruised through my fishnet stockings. Oh you can my kind of gosh. Of my knee. Wait, is that a tattoo on your knee though? Did you get a tattoo? Is it are they band-aids? Yeah, so I got a tattoo of band-aids because my knees are always bruised and cut up and it says poor thing, which is kind of sarcastic because it's like poor thing because my knees are always bruised, but they're bruised because I'm doing the thing that I love, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it was kind of it was kind of hilarious and ironic because the tattoo hurt worse than any <laughs> state bruise I ever got. <laughs> Getting a tattoo on your kneecap is exactly as bad as it sounds. Yeah, because it's thin there. That skin is so thin. Ooh. Also, right here uh -oh. is like pretty painful. Right here. Um, yeah, I was like gonna punch that guy. Um, I was like, you finish. <laughs> um, well, your your mom actually took you to get your first tattoo, right? Yeah, she did. My mom's like my best friend. We did everything together. I got my first tattoo. It's on my foot. I got her initials inside an anchor, and she got mine. I was 16 and she was like, oh gosh, I hope this doesn't turn into like a reoccurring problem. 10 years later, I have like 70 tattoos. So, you know, you could say it's her fault. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I just fell in love with them. I just loved getting them. And they're cool because they're kind of like a physical passport stamp. Like I get tattoos all over the world. So I have ones from like London and Russia and Australia. And it's like, it's cool to remember when I got them. Yeah, no, I love that too. All of my, I have like around 17, nowhere near as many as you, but I love them because they are all memories of like different chapters in my yeah. life as well. And they all mean something. Um, but what's, what's been the most random in, inspiration for a song that you've written? Ooh, there was a song on my second album called Bad at Love. Yeah. And the song is about me failing miserably at like a bunch of relationships. That's what it's about. But the inspiration for writing it was I've always wanted a motorcycle and I'm way too scared to ride one and I'll never have one. I just always picture myself getting to. And so when I was making the album, I was like, I want a music video where I'm on a motorcycle. I was like, and I want the song to sound like a song you'd be like cruising down the road, like on your motorcycle, like listening to and just like with your hands in the air, just like and somehow that turned into bad at love. I did, it doesn't make any sense at all, but it does. Just, it was inspiration for the sound. Yeah. No, I'm like that almost whenever I write a song as well. I, I have to have imagery. Like I almost have a video playing like while I'm writing in my head. Um, how do you deal, like when you're writing, how do you deal with writer's block? If you're like needing to, you're, like, you're working on an album for whatever reason, you're just like blocked. How do you do that? Oh, usually it's by doing something like super regrettable, like cutting bangs or like, <laughs> piercing my nose. Super regrettable. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 
it's I usually that's what I do. It's like <laughs> that makes there's three sense. things I do is I dye my hair or cut bangs, I get a tattoo, or I call an ex for closure and two <laughs> never worked out well. So, you oh know. I don't know. I loved you before. I love you even more now. Um, I've heard, you know, people say this about you. I've heard you say this about you, that you're kind of an outsider and you have been most of your life. So was it incredible to be named one of Time Magazine's most influential people in 2020? Oh, my gosh. I was so, I was so surprised, first of all. Also, like, here's, like, a really funny story about that. So I told my parents that I was going to be on the cover of Time Magazine and I like build it, built it up to be this like huge announcement because like I love my parents, but like they're never excited about anything I do anymore. They're always just like, oh, cool. You know what I mean? Like I could be like, I'm performing at the White House. And, like, you know, everything. and they'd be like, great. You know, I'd be like, I got a Nobel Peace Prize. And they'd be like, that's cool, Al. And so I told them that I was going to be on the cover of Time Magazine. And my mom's, my dad sent me a thumbs up emoji. And my mom sent me a text that said, wow, super cool, chick. <laughs> I actually love that. It's like a great way to keep you humble. <laughs> to make you proud of me. Like, yeah. what do I need to do? So in case you I guys think... are wondering why I'm an overachiever, it's like, hopefully my parents that situation explains it. Like, I know, but I think it's kind of an amazing thing, though, because I think they kind of come across as parents that are proud of you already, like in general, of like any small thing you might do. So it's kind of awesome to be like, okay, that was not impressive, cool. Um, that's totally happened to me as well. Um, it's, and it's always the things you think that are gonna be amazing, and you're like, oh my God, I get to, and, this, and then the things you're like, yeah, this happened, and people are like, are you serious? And I'm like, whatever, I don't even try anymore. Um, but um, you have a new make makeup line, which I actually, I'm not super into makeup, but I love how you do yours. And every performance Ooh. I see you, like on award shows or on The Voice, um, you came out and did this really cool thing. You you are just amazing at makeup. So um, it's called About Face, right? Yes, it is. It's called About Face, and that's for two reasons. The first, well, three. First is because it's About Face, obviously. It's makeup. Second reason is because an About Face is to make a complete turn in direction, which I thought was really cool. And it's kind of like a militant phrase. And I always feel like I'm like going into battle when I'm putting on my makeup. But the main reason it's cool is because AF are my initials. I'm Ashley Frangipani. So all the makeup yeah. says AF and that's my name. I love, yeah. I'm like a person that loves that too. I love meaning and everything or there's no reason for it. Where can people get it? You can get it at aboutface.com, super, super easy. Our Instagram is aboutfacebeauty and it's super fun. There's a lot of really cool photos on there where you can get some like makeup inspo and everything's vegan and clean and cruelty free. So, you know, it's very, very good for you and good for the planet. Oh, that's awesome. All right, well, before we go to break, can you tell us about your Black Creators Fund? Yeah, of course, I would love to. The Black Creators Funding Initiative we started um, right at the beginning of the quarantine. It's something I've wanted to do for a really long time. And, you know, we kind of just got uh, a, a little kick to get it done faster this year. I really wanted to put some stuff on my timeline that was really positive. I mm -hmm. felt like a lot of my followers who were black indigenous people of color were seeing like a lot of negativity and a lot of violence. And I wanted them to see something positive on their social media, mm -hmm. um, you know, to kind of lighten lighten the mood and help them celebrate like, you know, their community. So we started a project where we give um, grants to black creatives um, and people who, it's everything from makeup artists to photographers, directors, um, clothing designers, uh, poets. It's, I mean, the talent, the crop of talent is unbelievable. And um, so many of them have had such an incredible start. There's a band, Meet Me by the Altar, that we selected um, in, I think, the second round. And they just signed a record deal. There's a fashion designer named Asada from the first round, and she just had her stuff featured in Vogue. And wow. it's just really cool to see flourishing like that. And a lot of these people are incredible creatives who don't get jobs as often as their white counterparts. Mm -hmm. And so it felt really important to us to create a platform where 
our peers in the industry would have an opportunity to hire from this crop of creatives before they defaulted to the usual suspects on the list, you know? Yeah, and just make sure everybody has the opportunity and everybody gets a shot. Um, that, that's totally. what it's about. Uh, good luck with your makeup line. And y'all, Halsey's new makeup line is called About Face, and y'all be sure to look for it. And I mean, you should, you should do, you know what you should do? You should put pictures of you on stage because you do all these cool things and have people try and match it or do something. I'm just saying, as a little thing, because you're amazing at it. And if you impress someone that doesn't like makeup, that's pretty impressive.